Hello everyone. So I was going to tell you about the birth of my last daughter. I have five kids. My first one was cesarean. My second one was a planned cesarean. And my third, I was thinking about and looking into a VBAC, which is a vaginal birth after cesarean. It didn't work out. Had an emergency C-section. Fourth one, successful VBAC after three cesareans. So that was uh, definitely God given and awesome and so much better. Our bodies, women, God made us beautifully and wonderfully, okay? So they are capable of doing awesome things and healing and yeah. Vaginal birth over a cesarean women, I definitely recommend trying it that way. And men, be on board with your wife with that um, because it'll mean a lot to her and it matters. It really matters, okay? To some of us. Anyway, so, um, and then my fifth one, which I was going to tell you about, it was an attempt for a VBAC, but it was a failed attempt. Yeah, anyway, okay, so here goes the first story. And later on, I'm going to give you guys recommendations down below, and I'm going to tell you about all the answered prayers. But for now, I'm just going to tell you how it went down. Yeah, that's it, okay? So, um, it was Saturday night on a dreary day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was, uh, was a Saturday night. It was at night, and I uh, was getting ready to get into bed with my big old belly, and you know just how uncomfortable it is, or I'm not comfortable, you guys who don't know that. Super uncomfortable and big, and I was trying to get into bed and start to get comfortable, and then pop. I was like, uh, was that just my water? And then, so I stood up, and I was like, I think my water just broke, Ryan, because he was like, yeah, right there. And, yep, sure enough, it started kind of, there was a little gush. And then, uh, and then, yeah, and then just kind of continue leaking. And I was like, yay, yay, this is it. And I was so excited. So, yeah, then on the way there, I'll show you a little clip, okay? Because, like I said, I was going to try and videotape all this. But then, like, I just totally forgot about videotaping it because I was just so caught up in the moment. And when you're in that moment and when you're sitting there having contractions and you're trying to concentrate, you got to have someone videotaping for you, I think. That or I got to, like, just you know, put it off somewhere and then have it if, you know, I was going to do it that way. But yeah. Um, anyway, of course it didn't work out that way. So as we were on our way to the hospital, I just kept, went ahead, kept leaking and stuff. I, hopefully this isn't too much information for some of you guys, but yeah, I like, I put a pad on to try and keep from, you know, the water and stuff, but yeah, I went over that water flow. So my shorts were all wet. <laughs> on the way there so luckily I had a little towel and I had my purse like draped around me so I was able to put the towel right in front of me so it didn't really look bad as I was walking into the hospital not that it really mattered you know but anyway uh, so it wasn't as bad I got a little clip picture of us in the um, hospital getting ready to head up that way so my water just broke about 15 20 minutes ago just getting ready to go to bed getting our little one to sleep and uh, I heard a pop <laughs> and I actually prayed that I would and that my water would break and it's already happening like I've been praying uh, and no pain just some tightening and like there was a little pretty good gush and then just some and then it's still kind of am a little bit here and there as I move around but yeah we got like a 40 minute drive now so we're just gonna listen to worship music and praise God and uh, yeah when I first was so excited I was tired first of all but then I after my water broke and of course the adrenaline so um, I wanted to even cry because I'm so ready to meet her but anyway um, and just because it's happening the way that I'm praying with that we have been praying for and declaring so yeah anyway we're just gonna worship and we'll get back with you it's 10 13 now and haven't even made out of Fremont yet, but God's got this. And anyway, then we went to the small room. I ended up, they had to do the COVID test on me. And they didn't do it on Ryan, which I don't know why. But anyway, they did the COVID test on me. And then they said, I need to stay, stick around that room for, and that it would take two hours before the test even came back. So I was going to have to stay in that room. Plus, I was also waiting on, they said they wanted to make sure that, it was my water that broke and they had to test the fluid to find out for sure. 
I think my little son's coming up now too. It's really hard to make videos when kids are around. Those are water, they're broken. They started me putting the IV in. They never have good with putting an IV in me either. Not fun. <laughs> they had to like poke me, I think, three times. Oh, and then we also, being at the Nebraska Medical Center, they have train a lot of trainees there. And um, so, yeah, the trainee tried and didn't really work out there either. So, anyway, yeah. Um, finally did get the IV in though. And, uh, I don't know, just contractions started happening pretty quick and they were coming in pretty intense and they actually started hurting then. So I knew that I needed to really focus on God and be praying through them. Put the little earbuds in that um, we brought so I could focus on good godly music and keep my focus on him and try and do this pain-free way that I was believing for. Uh, but it was super, super hard because of all the people coming in and out and then the, as fast as the contractions were coming on, um, there were some definitely painful ones and I was like, dang it, you know, why, you know, and I was just really praying through it hard because like I said, they were coming on super hard. And I just remember even one time looking at Ryan, like, oh no, another one's coming like with worry and fear because I didn't want the pain, you know, and with, uh, the birth and when you're in labor, you can only produce either the stress hormone or oxytocin to progress the, to per, um, to you know help the process go along quicker if you're relaxed and producing the oxytocin now if you're all stressed out and producing the stress hormone then that causes even more pain so i feel like um i don't know there was just obviously fear in there so that um let stress hormones come more which caused more pain and um but when I was focusing and not fearing and when I was just gripping on to Ryan and in his arms and then also listening to the music and praying, like it was intense, but it wasn't hurting. And this nurse was like super encouraging and awesome and everything. And um, as I was going through all this, because like I literally went into active labor within those few hours of waiting to go to the next room and like really active labor to where they were coming on fast and they were starting to come on really intense and hardcore and if I wasn't concentrating they hurt really 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 bad I, I don't even know how to explain the pain that women do go through when it comes to um contractions and stuff like that because like okay so real quick with my last one that I actually had a successful vaginal birth on um I got to a, a seven which was active labor but then I couldn't handle the pain anymore I just wasn't focusing and I had people in and out and didn't have my doctor there there was just a oh my goodness <laughs> there was just a lot you know that played into that too so um, anyway, okay, so back on the thing. Um, oh, so I ended up getting an epidural because of the pain. It was too much. Oh, boy. Boys. Seriously, boys and their noises. Three boys. It's so nice to have a little girl now because, like, I don't know, it just says. Anyway, so real quick, uh, back into the story. Um, really crazy intense. Okay, her heart rate started dropping every time I had a contraction. The nurse in there, she says, you know, it's, you know, acted like it wasn't that big of a deal. We switched positions. She liked it better. Heart rate wasn't dropping as much, you know, and then just kind of keep going with the flow. Okay, so then, but then more people come in. I finally meet the doctor that isn't my doctor that I've never even met before comes in and you know and they, I have two different people checking me and just things are starting to get even more intense and people in and out it was not fun and then finally I had to switch rooms and they're like do you want to walk do you want to go in the wheelchair and I'm just like I don't know and I'm like if I end up having a contraction between you know I don't know so anyway they put me in a wheelchair and of course I had a contraction on the way down there too and ouch ouch okay when I was not concentrating on God and no pain and no stress it hurt so bad 
So anyway, on the way uh, down there, I had a contraction. And then Ryan said we weren't in that room, but for 20 minutes. And then they decided that her heart rate was dropping too much. And they mentioned a C-section to me. Okay, so right then and there, I believe I had a choice to either believe, get them all out of the room, pray and ask God if this is what you want, then okay, we're going to do it. But Lord, what do you want? You know, because... I believe it still could have been a possibility, but in that time and in that moment, I was going through a lot of pain because I, I believe it was because I wasn't able to concentrate on God and no stress. And that's why, yeah. So because of that, I was going through a lot of pain as it was. So I was like, um, okay, whatever, you know, if her heart rate's dropping. And of course I was looking out for her too. Um, and if they thought that it was, I needed to, she needed to come out because of her heart rate, then I was just like, okay. You know, I just totally agreed to it. But I do believe that if I would have prayed about it, there could have been a possibility of me switching positions. Something more that she liked better to where it wasn't, her heart rate wasn't dropping as much. I know that's not the case with everybody or everything, but I believe that in that moment, I chose to escape what I thought was escaping the horrible pain that I was going through. Just, you know, get me an epidural and yes, no more pain. Let's do this, okay? And have a C-section too. But gosh, obviously you're not thinking when you're in that moment like that. Um, and not thinking like, I just wanted to escape. Okay, because it was hurting, so I wanted to escape. How many of us do that? You know, we're in so much pain uh, that you just choose escape instead of crying out to God instead for a minute, giving him a minute through that excruciating pain, just giving him a minute and feeling peace about that decision. And then I wouldn't be living right now with all oh, the could ofs, you know? So, uh, yeah. Anyway, so with that, they ended up moving me into the operating room and oh, things got so much worse there. That's where like I really feel like the traumatic came in because of, okay, obviously, you know, with the stress hormone, I was producing even more of a stress hormone and it was her, the, the pain just was getting worse. And of course, you know, I was probably you know, ready to have her soon. I bet you anything I would have had her soon. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you guys could have seen me in the operating room, I was like, probably like a crazy woman a little bit because well, one Ryan wasn't in there. I was like, where's my husband, you know? And they didn't, I don't even remember them answering me with that. And I just remember gripping onto the nurse through one of the contractions, gripping onto the doctor through another contraction. And then another contraction when I was in there, I remember standing up and screaming. <laughs> Ryan said he heard me scream because he wasn't in the room at the time and it like wigged him out. He thought I was dying. But anyway, um... And then, you know, there's more water gushing out and I've been like just so much pain, but oh my gosh, what a relief to actually when I was standing and I was just, yeah, anyway, too much. No, I didn't crap or anything, <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so then they wanted to get me on the table because of course they had to start cleaning me all up and get ready to cut me, but they had to, um, um, sorry, real quick. They weren't getting me on the table to clean me up then at the time they were gonna the plan was to get a uh, epidural and numb me and then go but I that the contractions were coming too often I could not sit still for them to put this long old needle in my back and for me to be able to sit still through that pain so I was like you guys are gonna have to put me out you know okay so then they put me on the table and they have to lay me on my back because that's how they have to cut me open you know and laying on your back with a seven pound baby, all the water, other weight, and the fat, 
I could not breathe, okay? You can't breathe on your back. <laughs> and then they try to put an oxygen mask on me. So I'm like swatting that away because I can't breathe. And they're like, you need to keep it on. And I was like, okay. Anyway, um, and then like one of the nurses came up to me because she was freaking out because the way I was freaking out because I couldn't breathe. And then I was going through contractions on top of it laying flat. And she's like, are you feeling pain because of contractions or does it feel like some other kind of pain? Sorry, hold on a sec. I have my son trying to get in. Maybe if you don't hear me real quick. Okay, so. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with you, but the pain, the pain, the pain, the pain. Oh, I can't even think where I was at. Laying flat, trying to something open. Oh, the nurse. Okay, so the nurse comes, the nurse that was in there and was so encouraging and awesome, I believe. Um, she came in and she was or not came in she was already in she i gripped her one of the you know she was like holding on to her through one of the contractions but anyway uh she when i was like freaking out laying flat because i couldn't breathe and having contractions in the middle of it she was like are you having pain because of the contractions or does it feel like some other kind of pain and I said it was just the contractions and I can't breathe you know so I literally told her what it, what, what the problem was and she was just like okay well do what you were doing in the room with your husband and I know she was talking about praying because even talking to Ryan about praying he said that I was even speaking in tongues <laughs> out loud in there so yeah uh when she told me to do that to do what I was doing with my husband in there, then um, I just remember thinking, okay. And so I started praying in that moment because I had someone to remind me to pray and calm. And anyway, then next thing I knew, I was waking up to our beautiful daughter, my husband holding her and being in horrible pain. <laughs> yeah, I was still in horrible pain when I woke up because they didn't, weren't able to give me an epidural, so they just had to go off pain medications. And then I didn't want fentanyl, which was a really good heavy drug that could have helped me through that pain afterwards. But I told them from the beginning I didn't want that because I had endometriosis surgery a long time ago and had fentanyl when they, when I had like a collapsed lung and stuff. They were gonna, they gave me fentanyl to calm me down before they put that thing in, because of my collapsed lung. They put a thing in my chest. And I was freaking out for that, so they gave me fentanyl. And I just remember, like, after they put that thing in and I had a come down from the fentanyl, oh, no thank you. Did not want to go through that, so I was like, no fentanyl. So then they, were, they knew that, and they were going to get a different kind of medicine to help me with that. But guess what? It wasn't ready. So, okay, I'm sitting in there, in there after I had her. I wake up all you know so tired from just waking up from that and then um you have the shakes after you go through like a crazy surgery like that I had that with my first daughter too like after your body goes through that trauma you're just like and you're shaking you're so tense and that's how I was again with Everly unless it's a girl thing because <laughs> you probably have I wonder if you have shakes when you have babies naturally I don't know you'll have to tell me about it in the comments below but anyway so after that I was in total pain because I'd just been cut open and even vertically this time because of, be, of it being emergency they had to hurry up and cut me and that's supposed to be like I guess the fastest way and and then be able to put me out really quick so I woke up with yeah horrible pain from this cut then shaking and so tense and then my even my throat hurting because I they had a tube you know in my throat from being put out and just really, really bad pain afterwards and for a good hour because it was taking them forever to get the pain medicine of not the fentanyl and stuff and get it administrated in me. So yeah, I went through some crazy pain with her, but definitely worth it. And like I said, I'm going to put all the answers, the prayers answered below and recommendations. And yeah, there's my birth story for you. Okay. Bye-bye.